any what sort of shapes the team in going into the, the Frio? Yeah, the last match game? yeah, we're getting pretty close to um, the team that will probably run out round one. We're missing a couple of guys still, so yeah, they'll hopefully come back in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, it'll be a pretty strong team, which is good. Have you got an idea at this point about Garvin and, and Darling? Uh, yeah, Gov will play this week, which is uh, really good. Um, JD's another probably week away, so he trained well today, which is good, um, and he, he'll be available for round one. Jack Dowling in the leadership group, um, and, and that was a vote from the players, I understand, and, and also Elliot Yo. Can you give us a word on, on them being elevated to the leadership group? Yeah, those two guys have been working on their leadership for oh, a long time now, and um, they're great players. Their performance has matched um, their off-field stuff, so comes to that point where um, they're respected well enough within the group, which they always have been, but um, it's probably more reflected in internally that. Um, it's probably what you guys see now externally that is probably more of a, a story for you guys. But with Elliot, what, what do you think has lifted in him? Has it been off field? Has it been on the training track? Has it been during the games? Uh, he's always been a competitor, um, and I think his maturity has probably grown in the last few years. and. He's backed it up on field, and uh, you know some of his performances last year kept us in game. So uh, the boys obviously think highly of him, and he's been voted in, which is great. What is it about this game against Frio? I mean, obviously, it's your last competitive hit out before the season proper, but it's a game against Frio. Does that make it even more competitive? Oh, I don't think so. I think uh, it's it's great for the spectators, but um, we need to get a few more things right, which we didn't get right last week, and. There were some things that we did really well, so um, we're still prepping for round one, and, and they're in the same position, so um, it's another good hit out for us, and hopefully we can sharpen up going into the Melbourne game. In your role as stoppage coach, you've got a, obviously a new recruit in there in Tim Kelly. Uh, how's that been fitting in, and how's it been changing your planning ahead of 2020? Yeah, well, he's a great player, and having good players around uh, around the footy makes good stoppage coaches, so um, no, he's, he's fitted in really well with the group. Um, obviously, having Nick available as well, yeah, it's like having another recruit there. So uh, we're working through some things with our midfield at the moment, and we've got a lot of talent in there. But unless we work together, uh, it won't be that effective. I wouldn't have thought against good teams. With so many strong players in that area, you know, clearance-wise, how do you sort of structure that around, and how do you plan who gets what when? Is or is it just the best person in the best situation? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I think the the better we can work together in inside the stoppage in particular, the more effective it's going to be. So. Kelly's a great player. Um, he, he was, uh, I think, he was in the top couple in the Brownlow last year. But he has to work in with all of our other boys, which we've been working really hard on. Did Elliot Yo come back in for you this week? Yep. Yeah. All the guys who played in the bushfire game will be be in this week, so um, it's good to have them back. And uh, you know, obviously Gaffy played as well and Shep. So we get some um, you know, quality guys back, and, and they're good people as well. So good to have them around the boys. Can you tell us a bit about, I guess, how you've been managing? It's training the last couple of weeks since they've been stepping in and out of, of a lot of work. Uh, yeah, he hasn't changed much. Um, he went away last week, so um, he was back in full training today, and we, we had a we had a good hit out today for our main session. So um, all those guys had a good run around, which is good. Can you tell us if Jermaine Jones and Nick Reed are going to play this week? Uh, no, they won't. They won't play this week. So it's great to have those guys on. Obviously, we've lost a couple of guys um, with our small forward brigade. So. Um, having a couple of lively players, one of them a local um, North Beach boy, um, coming in is, from the Ammos is uh, a really good sign um, you know, for that league and him coming through. What's impressed you about those two? Well, Reedy hasn't done a lot of work on the track he's rehabbing from, some, from an injury, but uh, he's, st he's just starting to ramp up his training now, so I think he's going to play some minutes in the Waffle team this week. Um, he played eight games for the for the, our reserves team, the Waffle Eagles, last year, and um, he put a really good showing up. So obviously got him in a position where he could get picked up. And then um, Jermaine played uh, probably about 60 or 70 minutes last week and a bit through the midfield and forward and um, showed enough um, for the club to, to go with him. What excited you about a guy like Reid who hasn't had a set up in an AFL setting prior? What excited you about what you saw from him last year? Uh, I, I just think the way that he embraced um, the step up in, in level, uh, obviously coming from an am amateur club, um, the support that you get um, day to day is a lot different. But um, he, he really took to that and 
you know, our development coaches work hard with the Waffle Eagles team. So he got that support and uh, he was able to back it up with hitting the scoreboard. And some of his defensive stuff was probably the thing that uh, impressed me individually the most. But I think our coaching group were quite happy with that. And um, hopefully we get him on the, on the park pretty soon. Josh Kennedy, is, have you guys seen enough of his preseason for him to have a weekend off? Uh, no, no. We uh, we like our good players having run around. You know, the the preseason's so short now, so getting minutes in is really important. Um, every game's important, so round one uh, is important for us, and we need to make sure that we're we're ready to go um, come that game. So he'll obviously play on Saturday evening. How much do you think he'll play? Um, oh, I can't. I, I don't have the minutes on me at the moment. That's um, obviously the coach will work through that with. Uh, with probably the footy manager and the and the fitness staff, so I'm sure he'll play a large chunk of the game, which will be good. His his performance was good last week, and, um, and his pre-season's been really good. So it we'll, might get to a point where we decide, um, to, you know, put him in cotton wool, but we'll see how we go. Oscar Allen is the other one. He, he trained the other day. Rob his ankle. He trained the other day. How's he progressing? Do you, do you have any update on him? Yeah, he's not far off either. So he won't play this week, but um, yeah, he's he's you know knocking the door down to. Um, get some minutes into him, which is great. So uh, it's good when players are you know, coming to us saying we want to play. So he's in that position now, and you know, hopefully he'll play some minutes in the waffle over the coming weeks, and you know, potentially be available for round one. Can you fit Oscar Allen and Abagley Williams in the same side? Do you think? Oh, it depends who we're playing, and it probably depends um, what the rest of the forward line or even back line is made up of. Uh, Oscar can play forward and back, and he played second ruck last year, and. Bailey can play as a key forward or he can play ruck as well. So um, we're getting a little bit of flexibility in that area. We've also got Vardy and um, Hickey who are fit as well. And you know, those guys are fighting out for probably the second ruck role if, uh, if we get you know, the minutes out of Nick that we're looking for. The talent manager who found Bailey in Victoria told us that um, he's the perfect apprentice for Nick Nat. Have, have you seen them working together and what are they like? Uh, well, the first time they really got to work together was last weekend. So. Uh, yeah, Bailey had some really good moments um, in that game, and uh, their rucks were, were quite good. Uh, Phillips played quite well for Eston last week, so it's good for Bailey to play against some AFL quality. It was his first hit out of that level, so we're happy with what he produced. But there's still a lot of work to go, and um, if he can compete when he's forward and you know, provide, um, you know, something when Nick's not there in the ruck, um, that's what we're looking for for that player who plays that second position. Well, based on uh, how Gov goes this weekend and how he pulls up with that, um, add some confidence potentially he might be available for round one? Uh, if you ask Gov today, he'd say he's available. So um, I think if he gets through this game, um, he'll be available for round one. But you know, there's still, still a few weeks to round one, so we'll see how we go. Joe Brander, out on the wing, when you're, I guess, looking at your stoppage setups, how important is his role going to be, I guess, for, for your defensive setup? Uh, yeah, really important. Um, you know, we had uh, Maston there for the last six years. Um, has been a mainstay in our side um, on the wing, and um, you know, Brandon's had a go at that. We've had you know, Redden and, and Hutchings have had a go this year. So we've got some guys who can fill that hole. But um, you know, a guy who was as consistent with his role play as Masto was you know, is a loss. So um, you know, Brandon's played the three AFL games. Um, we're going to see some really good stuff and we're going to see some stuff that he needs to keep working through. So uh, you know, hopefully he grows quickly and, and he you know, fills a spot for us. Just on that sort of, the, those guys you mentioned there, you've got a midfield that's so strong. You know, some of those guys, Hutchings, Sheed, Redden, have they had to change their role on the team to, to stay in the 22 or are they going to spend time in the waffle just because there is a lack of spots in the midfield? Um, well, if, you know, there's, there's only six positions in the midfield or you know, seven to eight, depending on how we structure up, but um, there's probably one or two too many guys at times, and uh, someone unfortunately will miss out at times. But there's going to be other games where we can fit them all in. So, uh, and, and then obviously the, the year's long, so there'll be injuries and things will come up. But it's, it's a good problem to have at the moment. All of our mids are generally pretty fit, I'd say, at the moment. They're all ready to go. So uh, it's just a competition for spots now, which is um, something that is probably um, you know, handy to have, really. Has she been used in any other way uh, than he's probably used to? Uh, now, she, Sheed's um, role hasn't really changed over the last few years. He's he's quite a smart footballer. He can get get in front of the play and 
he's also quite good inside. So, um, you know, a lot of our roles are dictated to by our personnel. So uh, we'll find something for him and we're working through a couple of things at the moment, which is good. Just on a, a whole, Dan, you touched on it at the start. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to sort of rectifying this week? Simo said you got out to a slow start against Essendon. What are some of the focuses that you want to get right this week? Oh, we want to get off to a good start. That always helps. So we're a bit slow to get going last week um, and the conditions were a little bit different to what we faced, which is not excuse, but it was good for the boys to, to face that situation. And then as the game went on, we saw some probably more of our brand come come up to the, the top, which was good in the in the last, it was made the last quarter. So if we can play a brand like we did in the last quarter for you know, long periods of the game, we're going to be in a lot of games and, and that's probably the goal is to be as competitive as, as we can. So, um, yeah, I, I, what we wanted last week, we didn't quite get. So we'll just be trying to roll out the same thing again, which is probably what you saw in the late, later in the second half. Mm -hmm.